So we've cut thousands of sheets of plywood and today I'm gonna to share our tricks on how we CNC plywood and get perfect edges. So I need a new cabinet for my garage. The one I have now is kind of melting. We'll need to make something like this. Getting good results in plywood is actually pretty simple and I'm not gonna try and make you stick around for the whole video if you just want a fast answer. Keep in mind, there's also a deal on our CNC tools in this video. Let's go to the office. The number one thing when you're cutting plywood, especially with a compression cutter, is you cut conventional. So what's conventional? Like the tread on a tire, climb would be like a car rolling normally forwards where conventional, the tires would be rolling against you but you're also getting a better cut in plywood. And I'll show you that in a second. So the second thing is to use sharp carbide tools. This is also a kind of a duh, both of these things I knew. Realistically, these are the two biggest factors to me to getting good quality cuts in plywood. You have a nice carbide tool. Here's one of our compression cutters with chip raking. You can tell if a tool isn't cutting well, typically by how the plywood looks or the piece you're cutting after you cut it. it might look crappy. Some of that's your settings of your cam or your work holding. Often it's the tool. When we find something that's cutting poorly, it's almost always the tool is chipped or dull. And you have to check underneath a microscope to see that. To the naked eye, you can't see most of these little chips and that makes a difference in your cut quality. So those are my top tricks. You might as well just leave a like and move on, right? There's so many other small tips and tricks throughout this video that you'll probably want to stick around. You'll go from getting great results most of the time to you barely ever need to sand. A big factor to cutting wood is, especially plywood, is it has all these layers. Hmm. Hold on. Here's a little sign we made for our shop and it's made out of Baltic birch plywood. So you can see here all the different layers. We've cut away some of them. This top layer was something we wanted to be clean we'd need to use a down shear bit. So here's a down shear tool, two flute down cutter. We would then cut around the top and the down cutting action literally forces the wood downwards into itself and thus keeps this top edge nice and sharp and clean. However, once we get to the bottom, that down shear is gonna blow it out. Even if you have something underneath it, it's gonna make it blow out at the bottom. So you'd wanna use something like an up cut in that case. The up cut would pull the fibers up. However, that would blow out the top. So what do you do with plywood, right? You need something like a compression cutter. It has both. At the very top there, you have an up cut. So it'd actually be used like this. The part where my pinky finger is, that's the down shear. It can actually cut a piece like this all at the same time. And most spindles that are four to 12 horsepower can cut a three quarter inch piece of plywood in one pass with a quarter, sometimes up to a half inch compression cutter and you get a really clean cut. Some of that's how you set your settings and some of it's the tool, some of it's the machine work holding. You should be able to cut a compression cutter in a slotting pass all the way through plywood. And a compression cutter is gonna get you a clean edge on the top and the bottom at the same time. One little last feature about this compression cutter, it's one of our chip breaker compression. Those little slices in the edge there actually break up the chip and reduce the torque needed to cut Thus, it usually cuts better longer because it makes less heat. When we cut stuff like these pockets for the door hinges, the down cutter would cut these holes. We use an adaptive pocket, cutting conventional. When we come over to these dado or rabbit operation, we usually use conventional cutting as well. Our standard is to cut a finished pass with a conventional cut in wood. It always leaves a little bit cleaner of an edge. I would say when you do a compression cut, it's pretty much necessary. Otherwise, the backside of a compression cutter usually has a really rough edge. And so the climb side, the other side of your part cut will be really rough. So if I edit this 2D contour, this is our 23250C, which is a quarter inch compression cutter with chip breaker, this little guy. We would want to select all of our parts that we're going to cut here. One of the other key tricks here to get really good plywood cuts and not tear out because remember, the bottom of your compression cutter is an upcut. So if you don't enter just right, it's gonna tear out a little bit. And to get the best cut, you might know this from woodworking, you would wanna enter always with the grain. So if I look at my sheet, you can see the outline here. The grain will run in the long direction on most plywoods. If you go to the last tab here and look at preferred lead in position, I wanna enter kind of in the middle of these parts on the inside, straight in with the grain. Another key factor when you're cutting plywood is you want to get the up cut down below the top edge. This is a 3 8 version of a compression cutter. And this little portion here is the up cut portion. 
on our website have the upcut listed on the tool page so you know how long that is. So we need that to be down below the surface. If it's up above it in any way, it's gonna tear out because it's basically just pulling those fibers out the top. If we get it down below into the down cut portion, we won't have that problem. The way that I do that isn't a simple, perfect science, but if you can't cut a full depth pass, which is like a lot of hobby machines, or often when we cut one inch thick plywood, our five horsepower spindle cannot cut that deep. You'd wanna do a multiple depth step down on your 2D contour. So my maximum roughing depth is 0.7. What that says is let the tool go down 0.7 of an inch from the top of the material or top of the stock. Our first pass down below, that would be plenty deep enough. So another way you can get a really good finish cut plywood edge this also kind of works for hobby machines. This quarter inch compression cut, typically with a less powerful spindle, you can't cut as deep because you need more torque, you need more horsepower. You would want to do multiple depths, but you'd also want to do a stock to leave. And you could leave that at like, you know, 10 thou axial, which is at the bottom. And then the radial is on the side. I'd leave something like 20 thou or 15 thou. And that means like leave this amount to the actual part edge. We'd want to do 0.25. I think this quarter inch compression cutter has an upcut length of 0.22. So if you can get that down to maybe 0.24, that would be enough. Oh, another thing, make sure and do a ramp. That's also really useful in plywoods. Don't plunge straight in. Oh, we're going down maximum depth of cut but we're not finishing it. So if I simulate this, going through that first pass, second pass, if I stop there, if I'm in comparison mode, like I am here, you can see what's more than one thousandths of an inch to the part left. You can see that 20 thousandths. We need to clean that up. If you cut all the way to the bottom of the part, but you leave some stock to leave and then come back and use a second operation. So that has stock to leave on and multiple depths, even if you don't need the multiple depths. The multiple depths are mostly for not having enough spindle power. Call this finish. So you could leave some stock to leave either circumstance and then come back, turn off multiple depths, turn off stock to leave. And now you cut the full thing in one pass and you're gonna get such a clean cut at the end because it's doing so much less work, less vibration. Split that up into two different passes even with a compression cutter. All right, we're gonna do some test cutting on some plywood. I'm gonna keep the dust collection off so we can see what's going on. Start with a little engraving to tell them apart. And as I like to say, this is the song of my people, a good old router shrill noise. This is the quarter inch up cut. Oh, it's so painful, not just dust collection. We'll actually have to do some vacuuming up on our own, but then we have the quarter inch down cutter and we'll do it in multiple steps because it produces a lot of heat when you're packing those chips down and I don't want to break the tool. Now the quarter inch compression cutter. This is a climb cut, the opposite of what we would recommend. Now the conventional version of that cut, I do enjoy the little tornado sucking up into the dust boot. And last, the 3 8 compression cutter cutting conventional, and it's a bit more dust and you can tell a wider pass, but I think it has surprising results. Get this cleaned up. Some quick work with a multi-tool to get those tabs disconnected and take out these parts. Up cutter, see some tear out on the edge there. The top, that's expected because it's pulling the fibers up. The bottom edge is gonna turn out pretty good. Down cutter, top edge, wonderful. Bottom edge, a little bit of tear out. Usually a better case than the up cutter to get a cleaner cut all the way through. So this is the climb cut of the conventional cutter. You can see some fuzziness through here. This side's pretty rough. It's actually pretty good. It's a pretty new tool. So this is conventional compression cutter, quarter inch. Both of these are quarter inch. That looks pretty fantastic. You can tell in person anyway. The one is definitely cleaner than the other, but you're getting both edges pretty pristine, top and bottom. And then a 3 8 compression cutter with chip breaker. This has chip breaker as well. The 3 8 is a stiffer tool. I'd say it's the sweet spot for our five horsepower spindle. And you can just see this is just 
definitely a better cut. It's actually almost smooth right here in the center. The ends of a rounded cut are always gonna be a little bit rougher, but this is actually really nice too. Both top and bottom are dang near flawless. There's one tiny little tear right there. And I could go slower around the corners or do multiple passes with a cleanup pass and probably get rid of all of that. And then you're seeing the tabs. That's just to hold it down. We would trim right those off. Compared to a quarter inch compression cutter, there's a lot of whip. You can actually hear it in the cut. So you're gonna get more vibration indefinitely. If you compare the ends of the quarter inch versus the three eighths compression cutters, there's just way less rigidity in a quarter inch tool. It's a great tool. We could optimize this. The three eighths is gonna cut better all day. So a half inch is even more stiff and more rigid and a better cut in the end. All right, I mentioned earlier, there's a deal for those that watch the whole video. There'll be a code right here on the page for our CNC tooling kits. Don't tell anybody about it. It's just for you because you watched the whole video, right? Our deal. All right, so let's jump into the Fusion. Here's the cabinet. And if you want this cabinet model and all the cam, so you can get that in the link in the description. These operations are basically set up to automatically find the certain size of holes or types of features that we have. The pockets, so those are for the hinge. And then these are the dados or rabbits. These have a 15 thou slop added. And that negative 15 thou stock is just to accommodate for how plywood changes throughout. Okay, so we got the drills, we got the adaptives set up. All right, so I think we're ready and I'm gonna post this and we'll go out in the shop. Go. Start out with some drilling with the five millimeter brad point tool. This is for like adjustable shelf pins. If you think you can drill as fast as a CNC, you're wrong. We're already on to the eight millimeter brad point for the hinges. Seconds later, we're on to our two flute down cutter cutting the pockets for the hinges and the dados and the rabbits. This kind of tool can really move. We're going at 600 inches a minute and 17,000 RPMs. And finally, the quarter inch compression tool cutting out the parts. This is a full depth pass in three quarter plywood and it's 430 inches a minute at about 18,000 RPMs. And of course, a conventional cut. See here, real nice sharp inside edges and the outside edge, there's an outside edge. You can see it's got a little bit of tear out because that's not the part we're cutting. That would be the climb side. This is a really weird low ply material. The less dense that material is on the inside, it's kind of like cutting straw and it just kind of pushes instead of cutting. To be completely honest with you, I was planning to use Baltic birch, but then we didn't have any 18 millimeter Baltic birch in the shop for some reason. Some apple ply, but I can't use apple ply in my garage to hold car wash materials at like $250 a sheet. So instead, we're using uh, mystery material that delaminated. Holy crap. That's not gonna work. What kind of door is that? So check this out. Dead center in the sheet here. It's pretty bad. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Where did we get this material? So this turned out pretty good. I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys can make better plywood cuts. But if you have questions, leave them in the comments. We're always happy to help.